and welcome to a new show. I'm your host, Jerry Aquino. Let's do some monologue drugs, shall we? There's so much to cover. Like, in sports news, prosecutors are investigating an apparent cheating scandal during a fishing tournament at Lake Erie. Because of the size and weight of the fish, several fish were cut open and tournament directors found lead weights and actual prepared fish fillets in the fish, which confirms everyone's suspicions. Even fish are doing keto now. <laughs> More sports, 19-year-old chess grandmaster Hans Niemann is accused of cheating in more than 100 games of chess. The crime? Making chess fun for Americans. <laughs> Kudos to him. If you're not cheating, you're not trying, right? <laughs> and this is interesting. Australians have petitioned to put Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter, on their new currency, replacing Queen Elizabeth. The second choice before King Charles? The stingray that killed Steve Irwin. Oh. Ouch. King Charles, already not too popular over there, huh? <laughs> In technology news, an early prototype of Tesla's proposed Optimus humanoid robot was unveiled at the company's artificial intelligence event, and a team of people had to help it walk. That's not good. The bot seems to lack the basic skills to do anything at all by itself, so much so that they're thinking of naming it King Charles. <laughs> you see what it, you see it. In celebrity news, according to a court filing, Angelina Jolie alleges that on a 2016 flight, Brad Pitt grabbed her by the head and shook her and then choked one of their children, struck another when they tried to defend her. I mean, what does Brad think this is? Fight Club Disney Plus? As a result, Pitt is expected to suffer the same consequences and fate as Johnny Depp, which is no consequences whatsoever and being celebrated for the rest of his life. Allegedly. <laughs> Here's a hot button topic. 66 abortion clinics have closed since Roe was overturned, sending women scrambling for medical care. Meanwhile, in Texas, the U.S. mullet championship is still searching for the best mullets in America. <laughs> and I think they have a point. If there were more mullets in the world, there would be less need for abortions. <laughs> Anyone watching a home, at home with a mullet, you've just been mullet shamed. Boom. And finally, a public payphone in China began ringing and ringing. And it kept ringing because no one could figure out how to operate a not mobile phone. <laughs> That's the monologue. Stick around. We have more show. Welcome back to a new show. I'm Jerry Aquino, and I'm in the market for a lamp. Maggie Haberman of the New York Times has written a new book about Donald Trump, Confidence Man, The Making of Donald Trump and the Breaking of America. Let's take a look at it in this week's The Stand-In. Confidence Man is, of course, long for con man. Seriously, I'm not making that up. It really is. Confidence Man has many new revelations, which is surprising because Maggie has been writing about Trump for six years and has already won the Pulitzer Prize for it. Now we're learning she was holding the good stuff back. This is approximately the 36th book about Trump and his presidency written either by an insider or someone with access to an insider. There's no slowdown in books about Trump and there are already five times as many books about Trump as there have been about Nixon. With Nixon, we didn't learn who Deep Throat was for 33 years. Who will be known as Trump's Deep Throat? Stormy Daniels? <laughs> no, but seriously, I mean, someone who's leaking Trump's secrets. Stormy Daniels. Now, someone had to have told the FBI exactly where the top secret files were kept, and many people think it could be Jared Kushner, seen here having a conversation with someone but not really listening. But back to the book. Haberman interviewed many insiders, including three interviews with Trump after he left office. The book covers his days as a businessman through the presidency. Among the revelations, when she asked him if he regretted running for president, he thought only about how he had benefited and said that he now has rich friends that nobody knows about. <laughs> Donald, if people like you only because you were president, but they won't be seen with you, they're not really your friends. Trump considered firing Jared and Ivanka via Twitter, and then he was talked out of that by John Kelly, who told him to talk to them in person. He never did anything, and they remained in his administration. Firing your daughter via tweet? Talk about a breach of etiquette. I mean, if you wouldn't break up with your girlfriend via Twitter, your best daughter deserves just as much, I think. Trump mentioned Jason Miller, one of his advisors, seen here swallowing a football, 
that it was amazing that all of his top advisors were Jewish. He repeatedly mentioned to Miller that Miller had a sweet and understanding Jewish wife. Neither Jason nor his wife are Jewish. And when he finally told Trump that he wasn't Jewish, Trump said, so just your wife is Jewish. Trump must have been under the false impression that Miller is always a Jewish last name. I'd have been like, yeah, we're the Miller Bergsteins. Whatever, dude, it's fine. <laughs> Brett Gerard, sorry if I butchered that, seen here, ready for picture day, is a public health officer and an admiral with the U.S. Public Health Service Commissioned Corp. Brett came into the White House in his uniform to talk about illegal drug labs in Mexico. And Trump, seeing his uniform, assumed Brett was in the military. And then the president recommended that we bomb the labs which would be an act of war. The solution for preventing Trump from effectively continuing to press for war with Mexico was the White House asking Brett to stop wearing his dress uniform around Trump. It makes you wonder, does Trump see the Salvation Army out in front of Macy's and just start saluting them and thanking them for their service? It's like... Another revelation in the book is that when Trump contracted COVID, he was scared that he was going to die. Thank goodness for hot hydroxychloroquine and injectable bleach, huh? But seriously, I want to hear more about this. Our writer, Jim, Jim Coughlin just left us hanging on that one sentence. Come on, details, Jim, inside scoop. I, was, I want to hear more about the fear in his eyes. Ah, thanks, Jim. Now I have to buy the book. After this, I'm going straight to Barnes & Noble and skipping straight to the part about where he thought he was going to die. And I'm going to read it right there in the fun things to read about aisle. But <laughs> I digress. <laughs> Also, at one point, Trump had a meeting with the UK Prime Minister, Theresa May. At the meeting, he said, some people are pro-life, some people are pro-choice. Imagine if some animals with tattoos raped your daughter and she got pregnant. Yikes! Not tattoos. Trump fearing his grandchildren would be born half tattooed, although the way that works, they'd be considered fully tattooed. You know how that goes. <laughs> In another revelation, Trump saw a bunch of Democratic staffers who were not white, and he asked them to fetch him some pastries, thinking they were waiters. They must have been tattooed. <laughs> this has been The stand -in. Stick around for the desk piece. We'll be right back. Hello, welcome back to a new show. I'm Jerry Aquino, and I still have a crush on someone. <laughs> or do I? You guys. Joe Biden just 420 would the entire country. Check out your boy. As I said when I ran for president, no one should be in jail just for using or possessing marijuana. It's already legal in many states. Yeah, you tell him, Joe. And criminal records for marijuana possession have led to needless barriers to employment, to housing, to educational opportunities. No, homeboy ain't lying. And that's before you address the racial disparities around who suffers the consequences. While white and black and brown people use marijuana at similar rates, black and brown people are arrested, prosecuted, and convicted at disproportionately higher rates. Ah, oh, look at him looking all presidential talking about weed. He's talking about herb. Herbivores unite. So today, I'm taking three steps to end this failed approach. First, I'm announcing a pardon for all prior federal offense, federal offenses for the simple possession of marijuana. You hear that? We're going to get you out, Theo. You just hold tight. Second, I'm calling on all governors to do the same for state marijuana possession offenses. Third, the federal government currently classifies marijuana as a Schedule I substance, the same as heroin and LSD, and more serious than fentanyl. It makes no sense. Oh my God. Guess who has two thumbs and is driving through state checkpoints ASAP, hotboxing my shit. No, but seriously, if my mom is watching, I never touch the stuff. I have church in the morning, every morning. In other news, the Biden administration has also unveiled its goals to align artificial intelligence powered tools with what it calls the values of democracy and equity. It includes guidelines for how to protect people's personal data, limit surveillance, and most importantly, teaching the bots how to just barely skirt the line of sexual harassment. Very important. In world news, Iran is having its largest women-led protest in history after a 22-year-old woman named Masa Amini was arrested and killed by the morality police for wearing her hijab too loosely. For Americans, this is a hijab. Now, before you get all high and mighty Americans, you used to kill women for showing too much ankle. 
okay? 1600s, Massachusetts, anyone? What's going on with men trying to control women? And what the fuck with the morality police? That's a real thing in Iran. There's no separation of church and state over there. So Iranian men are like, cover up your forehead and stop giving me an unholy boner. <sighs> Victim blaming. That's the behavior of an abuser. So leaders of Iran, stop thinking with your super tiny dicks. A new show stands with the brave women of Iran. And in this week's segment of Repeat the Punchline, Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson made her first appearance on the Supreme Court bench last Friday, with Chief Justice John Roberts wishing her a long and happy career in our common calling, which is the traditional welcome for a new justice. Meanwhile, Clarence Thomas opted for a more symbolic gesture and pitched a tent in her honor. I said pitched a tent in her honor. Come on, it's a boner in the pants. Don't make me explain these people. You know what, let's do one more. President Joe Biden has confirmed that he is in fact running for president again in 2024. Wait, I'm sorry, I misspoke. He won't be running for president, he'll be walking for president in 2024. I said walking for president, walking. How much walking? I'm taking three steps. And that does it. Make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. I'm Jerry Aquino, bye-bye. <laughs>